This is how I'm dodging the coronavirus right now. <laughs> Welcome back to another video, guys. So, it's still freezing, man. What, what, what's the day today? Like, almost April? Yeah. Man, this weather, we're supposed to get snow again today. Can't believe it. And, um, stuff is getting serious up here with this virus going on. So, um, there's rumors that we're probably going to be going on lockdown soon. So, who knows? Anyways, we're back in the garage. Got a lot going on. Um, what we are going to do is we're going to give you guys a quick run through on the whole fuel system thing. So, as you guys can see, we got our handy dandy little regulator mounted up. So, we ended up using a uh, bolt. There was a, I think like a, what was it, like a, a harness bracket? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, there was a harness bracket here. Um, so I ended up using the original bolt with its original um, spot, like hole for the bolt. And then I ran the return line. So we got that in place. And as you can see, we got our uh, push lock fittings in there, our um, quick release or quick disconnect fittings, and our 3 8 line. So we ended up using a special tool well, like this one. What we ended up doing is uh, use a hole saw and cut this out. Drilled it out first, cut it in half. So then you plop it in here. I'll show you guys real quick. And then you take your line, run it through this hole with about an inch slack. And once you have your fitting, put this here. I ended up using a washer because this like likes to move around just because it's like concave in there. So with this washer, it makes it flat. Now I can get this in here, get these two aligned, squeeze, 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 and you're good to go. But, so the problem is though, is that this thing likes to back out. So you prevent that by doing it, by using this clamp, put your hose in here, and you tighten it, now it won't back out. And going like that. So that's how we did our first set of uh, quick disconnect fittings. Here's our 90 degree, got a straight here. And these two lines, let's get underneath the car. We put some lights down there so you guys can give it a look. Check that out, looking like stack. But yeah, so as you can see on the far left, we have one of our 3 8 line running all the way to the back of the tank. And then right in the in the middle, we have our uh, what's going to be our feed. Um, or vice versa. I can't remember which one's which yet, but it doesn't really matter. Anyways, we got a return set up here. The other two already run up to the top of the tank. Looks like stock. Looks legit. So we're going to get those covers on. Um, maybe later on. like. You said Justin once the uh, end. Yeah, once it fires up, then we'll see what happens. This one is gonna connect directly into the fuel rail. This first fuel rail is gonna go around. I'm gonna have a 90 from that fuel rail. And it's gonna come back in here. It's gonna be the return. Um, and then it's gonna go down here. Other thing that we gotta do today is this is a returnless style um, fuel assembly and we need it to be a return return style so got this bulkhead fitting what we are going to do is drill this out somehow and put this in a spot where we can run a hose all the way to the bottom of this assembly we're probably going to gut all this stuff out because again if you guys remember got a saddle style tank some sort of like venturi effect happens here we won't be able to run it so, but we are gonna order a different fitting that's gonna emulate the same thing. So, gonna have this here, hose all the way to the bottom of the tank, or the carriage assembly, to prevent any bubbles or aeration or anything like that to go into the fuel and back into the engine, because that'll be bad. Having a 90 coming off here, and then we're gonna have a quick disconnect fitting going off of this and back to the car. So, and check these parts out. All right, good deal, dude. Got everything painted black. 
nice and shiny. We still care of those today. And surprisingly, the paint got dried pretty good. Yeah, being, it's not like tacky at all, but. Being freezing cold. Yeah. This was rusted as hell. Mm, yeah. Came out nice. Way better than it looked like before. So, gonna go with the all black look. And, um, Justin, you are gonna. I think, what do we talk about? I think we said we were gonna do, well, I worked on the, the fuel assembly and then the other thing that we started talking about is cooling. So I think we're gonna need a different radiator, dude. Because, that one's way too small. Oh yeah, dude, like this, this radiator right here. Con condensers, I guess just to give you guys an idea, take a look at the condenser. Can, can they see it? Careful, don't break this bracket. Can they see that? Yeah, yeah, it's yep. that one right, yep. that's the condenser. So the radiator is literally about the same thickness, which is like a tiny yeah. little baby. Yep, that one. It's so, like half an inch. That's definitely not gonna work, especially for this truck motor. It's not gonna work at all. Um, so we're gonna get rid of that. While we're doing that, Justin had a really good idea. So we do wanna keep the AC in the car. We wanna keep everything running and uh, we don't wanna sacrifice I guess the overall comfort side of things mm. so want to be like race car comfort so what we or Justin came up with is my original idea was bending the lines but he's like hey let's flip the condenser over so now these two lines will be over here and then our condenser is gonna be right here so it'll be like just like a direct connect to it um, we might have to fab a little bracket here and there, but... Test our welding skills. Yeah, we'll try our welding skills out. So, he's gonna take this apart, um, flip the condenser, take the radiator out. There's probably gonna be a little bit of fluid left in that. Yeah, um, sure. So we will see. While he's doing that, I'm gonna keep working on this thing. Again, I'm gonna drill it out. Talk a little bit about this package over here. And I think it's, uh, I think it's safe to open it. So, that package came straight from the epicenter of the coronavirus. So we're gonna be taking a look at it today, finally. Hopefully it's the right harness too. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's been sitting in the garage for several weeks now. And I haven't tried to open it. I don't know what the quality looks like. It's from China, it's for an LS3. It should work for our application. So, let's see what happens. Like 200 and some bucks. You know, it looks nicely packaged. It's coming from all the way from China. No. Yeah. Doesn't look maybe that frame there. There she is. LS3 Gen 4 6.0. Cool, they give you yeah. the whole thing, dude. Dude, that's awesome. Some people were complaining that the instructions were like garbage, like straight garbage, dude. But this looks legit. That looks solid. Yeah, and originally when I bought this, I had no idea I had, like what I was getting into. I didn't even know if it, this was legit or if I was gonna get my uh, my harness. It's kind of gambling here, but. Dude, that looks solid. Yeah, dude. That looks awesome. Hell oh, yeah. Here's a good old transmission plug. Oh man, dude. Look at this. It looks great, dude. Nice little grommet. Seal everything up. sealed up nicely. Here, um. Here's a fuse box. Look at that. Dude, I'm excited. I'm, I'm impressed. Not gonna lie. Yeah, that's legit. But yeah guys, super excited that that worked out. I was uh, starting to get a little nervous, but man, it looks legit. If you guys want, you know what, actually, I'm gonna put the link in the description for the seller that I used. It was on Alibaba. So like I said, I just PayPal the money. It took a while because this whole virus thing that's going on, but it made it. So thank God that worked out. Um, right now, like I said, we're gonna get started. Justin's gonna start with the front of the car, get the condenser, radiator out, condenser's gonna get flopped, and I'm gonna work on the fuel assembly, so. So, we've made more progress. I think uh, as we disassemble and tear this freaking thing apart, we're starting to figure out how it works. Um, let's backtrack a little bit. 
So this part that was in here, like that, this is the actual Venturi fitting. Remember we didn't know where it was because originally we had this. This connects to the top of this. And then we had our fuel pressure regulator that connects on the bottom of the fuel pump. Spits fuel back out. And this was connected to the top where fuel pressure regulator is. And we just didn't know how the current system moved fuel from this side to this side. Well, it had to come in this direction through this nipple for sure, but we didn't know if the Venturi was above this or if it was this. Turns out it is this part right here. Um, so Justin, what he wants to do is maybe we can use this fitting instead of buying like this $100 fitting that we need and uh, see if we can make it work while I'm testing it to see if it was a Venturi fitting. We decided to experiment a little bit. So watch what this does. Hook it up in here. Uh, maybe. Take it out of the water. Okay. There we go. Okay. So air compressor is at 40 PSI. So again, I'm gonna blow air through this. The air is gonna come out, but it's gonna create a vacuum effect on this side. And it should, by theory, suck the water out of this cup. Watch this. Ready? Look how, how fast this is going down. This is 40 PSI. That works. Now, question is, can we use this? Maybe we could hook up the feed to this, so the feed's gonna have to, that's gonna have a shit ton of pressure. That's gonna have feed, oh, we could do that. PSI. But it's gonna take a toll on the total PSI because it's gonna wanna slow it down. So it's gonna have to go through here. That's true. So I, I don't know if I'd want that. See, Maybe. but we don't need the full, full 80 some PSI of pressure, do we? 58. Well, the 58? We need 58. We need right. 58? Yeah. How much does that pump out? A crap ton. More than 58? Oh yeah. Then we can just regulate it. Can we? Yeah. Theoretically? But like, see, but like, it's gonna skew things off with, especially if we have boost, it's gonna climb. That's like a, yes, that's boost regulated, but it's, I, I, I read it somewhere. I didn't really understand it, but like they said, if you do it that way, it's gonna throw, like, you're gonna have to count for that. Okay. I don't know. I don't know either. Or should Sorry. we just try like this, this setup and see if it works? Yeah, we could. I mean, it definitely is gonna pass fuel on this, I just don't know how much. Yeah, for sure. We did drill out this assembly, so now this housing is pretty much useless. So that's where our fuel pump is. We're gonna con connect a line directly onto that on that nipple, I was gonna use this one, but it's, it keeps on kinking. I need something that's flexible, like a corrugated line like this. So I'm gonna have to get that ordered. Now it's gonna connect there, and just gonna use this housing, essentially just to keep it from moving around. And um, that's pretty much it. Then we'll have a return style uh, fuel system. Yeah. Once it's finished, we should definitely walk through it, because I agree. it seems like people just can't get it figured out. Yep. So let's do that. Let's let's see if we can rig this up, yep. and we'll go from there. But all right, let's see what happens. We continue to mess around with this thing, and I think we're just about to call it quits. We ended up hooking up. We rigged the the old fuel pump in a very sketchy way to the battery next to water, and uh, just to see how that would work with this Venturi fitting, and um, can't get it to work. The problem is that. This works fine, this does not work. So we can't connect a 3 8 line or any sort of line to the top of this. And we have to use this weird ass fitting that clicks in like that. So then once that's clipped in, these are obviously not 3 8 so that kind of defeats the purpose of having the return go through here so it sucks up fuel from one side of the fuel tank and dumps it into the other. So, radium on the other hand, they engineered that whole thing, they tested it. So, and it works. 
Well, I guess that's what we're gonna run with. Yep. So I guess everything else is fine. We just have to get um, a corrugated line for the top of the um, fuel pump that's in here. I'm gonna drill and tap somewhere up here. And I've said that like seven times, but we keep getting sidetracked with this, but we're just gonna get it done now. And then after that, we'll probably just wrap it up. And um, been waiting on some parts. Stuff is taking forever just because, you know, this whole virus thing is setting like set back on all businesses, shipping and everything. So we are gonna have to get a different radiator. Did they see this? Did you film this? No. Look at that. Look at this baby radiator. It's so tiny, it's so yeah. thin. Yup. It's like half an inch. Yup. So we're gonna have to get a new one. Um, but that condenser over here, that should work. So we're gonna flip it upside down so all of our lines run on the left hand side. Next to our AC compressor, which is gonna be right here, so it should be a nice little shortcut. Heater hoses are on the left side, down, over. We should be all set. All right, guys, we're about to wrap it up for the day. We've been out here for like six hours or so. Doesn't seem like we made a lot of progress, but we did. These are just like little things that you have to talk through, figure out ways to implement, like fuel system, all of this stuff. It takes time, you can't just, it's not like a plug and play. Especially when there's nobody else that has any sort of like documentation online. Um, so what we pretty much ended up doing is drill the hole for our return. And that's what the bottom looks like. I'm actually gonna swap out this nut for a, um, a barb, a quick disconnect um, barb fitting. And then we're just gonna have our hose running to the bottom of this canister. Again, just so it doesn't create any bubbles or anything like that. And once that's set up, um, we're also gonna tee it off to our Venturi fitting that's gonna go to the other side of the tank. And that'll be it for the fuel. Um, at least for the back side of it, for, for the tank itself. And then up here, we have all this set up. We do need an end tank. Our rails are behind. They should be here in like maybe two weeks or so, hopefully. That's what Summit told me, but I don't know. It's just, we ordered some, uh, I think, Holly rails. I think that's what they were. I think that's it for today, guys. Uh, Tuesday, we should be getting more parts, and maybe throughout the week, I might be working on the harness a little bit uh, to see if we can create some sort of like plug and play solution and then go from there. So, thank you guys for watching. Please uh, don't forget to follow us on Instagram too. We're um, got a post there, but sometimes forget, I'm not really good about it. We gotta get better at it. So, um, we'll keep you guys updated. See you guys next Tuesday.